You feel humbled yet? Very. Two years after the former president assured us it would all be done by springtime, remember that? He meant the spring of 2020? Yes. Not 2022? Well. As we speak, COVID records are shattered daily. Those who confidently predicted how this uh, pandemic would unfold, I wonder how their self-confidence is doing now. We're living in dark times. January is the darkest month of the year anyway. But even more, the national mood is dark. It's appropriate then the Torah portion of the week describes the plague of darkness. There's a fascinating verse in the Parsha. Pharaoh seemed to finally relent after the plague of darkness and let the people go, but he had one condition. Rak tzonchem uvekarchem yutzag. Only your flocks and your herds will stay behind. Pharaoh was no dummy. If the Israelites left with all their possessions, what would be their incentive to come back? Throughout the long confrontation, Moses demanded of Pharaoh to let the people go, but not permanently, only to worship God. The implication is once they finished worshiping God, they would return to Egypt. So after the plague of darkness, Moses, Pharaoh summoned Moses and relented. Fine, go and worship your God. But he demanded a guarantee that the Israelites would in fact return to Egypt. So he insisted that the livestock stay behind. Moses' response was this. Our livestock shall go with us. Not a hoof will remain behind because we don't know with what our, we are to worship God until we arrive. In other words, we don't know the future until we arrive there. That's a very good perspective on life. Trying to figure out what the world will look like tomorrow, let alone three months from now, let alone three years from now, is a monumental and deeply frustrating and draining task. There's simply too much that we do not know. Here's the basic dilemma of the human condition. We are creatures who yearn for certainty in an uncertain world. We crave stability in an unstable world. We want clarity in a world that will never be clear. We favor familiarity in a world that is changing by the moment. We want explanations to a world that cannot be fully explained. We want control over an uncontrollable world. We do not like uncertainty. But the most certain thing in the world is uncertainty, and therefore, Judaism teaches humility. Teach your tongue to say, I don't know, lest you become entangled in a web of deceit, the sages teach. Don't be so certain. Don't assume you mo know more than you do. Don't assume you know more than the experts. Train yourself to say, I don't know. Don't assume you know more about warfare than the generals. Nobody knows more about taxes than I do. Nobody knows more about construction than I do. Nobody knows more about technology than I do. Nobody knows more about infrastructure than me. Nobody knows more about environmental impacts statements than me. I know more about renewables than any human being on earth. I know more about steel workers than anyone who has ever run for office. Nobody knows more about banks than I do. Nobody knows more about trade than me. I understand mon money better than anybody. Nobody knows politicians better than me. Now, we have some mental health experts in our congregation and even here. I wonder what you call that type of personality. Moses' final words to Pharaoh as he announces the last plague, 
on Egypt. The slaying of the firstborn are these. Ko amar Adonai, kachatzot halayla ani yotze betoch mitzrayim. Thus says the Lord God, at around midnight I will come forth among the Egyptians and every firstborn in the land of Egypt will be slain. The sages pick up on a strange turn of phrase. The Bible describes Moses telling Pharaoh that God will arrive around midnight. Kachatzot. Why the imprecision? Would God really say around midnight? In the very climax of this great and awesome confrontation between God and Pharaoh, would God really say something like, wait for me around midnight? It's like a date, wait for me on the corner of 68th and Columbus, I'll be there around 12 o'clock. Even Cinderella knew that when the clock struck 12, the party was over. Her fairy godmother told her that exactly at midnight, not sometime around midnight, give or take a few minutes, at exactly midnight, the spell will wear off. And you know what? We read in the next chapter in the book of Exodus that when the plague of the firstborn actually arrives, it is precisely at midnight. Bachatzot At midnight, not kachatzot Sometime around midnight. The rabbis understood this passage and as, as an example of Moses' modesty. From this verse, they concluded that we should teach our tongue to say, I don't know, lest we get caught in a falsehood. I don't know is not a bad place to start a discussion of complicated matters. I don't know what will happen next month or next year is not a bad outlook. A little less certainty, a little less arrogance, a little more sense of common responsibilities. These would be very welcome in our dark times. And I hope that even as we break out eventually into the sunshine of our post pandemic future, that we will maintain this sense of modesty and humility and a little sense of uncertainty that we may have acquired during these pandemic years. Because we acquire humility only after being humbled. Only after we have personally experienced unfairness do we learn to love justice? Only after we have fallen ill can we appreciate health. Only after we have failed over and over and over again can we cherish those moments in life when we truly succeed. I should tell you one of the unique pleasures of reaching a certain level of experience in your vocation is the joy of being able to say, I don't know. When I was younger, I was usually the youngest rabbi in the room of seasoned professionals. And I felt that I needed to know everything. And that these know-it-all older geezers would judge me negatively if I admitted that I didn't know something. I'm not embarrassed anymore to say, I don't know. It gives me joy. I don't know how this microphone works. I don't know how a computer works. I don't know what's in a COVID vaccine. I don't know when this pandemic will end. You don't either. I've never even heard the word Omicron until several weeks ago. Even Moses who spoke face to face with God. Even he didn't know for sure the precise hour that God would arrive. 
And even Moses didn't know for sure what would be needed in order to worship God until the people actually arrived at the worship site. So if Moses didn't know stuff, I'm fine with not knowing stuff too. I'm just going to keep my head down, take in the advice of those who know more than me, try my best every day, try to help other people as well, and remind myself that while I don't know when the pandemic will end and I don't know how the pandemic will end, I know that it will end. Day always follows night. In the words of the prophet Malachi, the sun will rise again, bringing healing in its wake.